In the last segment, Flavia, who is a psychologist and a traumatologist, it was discussing some of the signs you can tell or have when you realize you're traumatized. And the first thing you talked about, Flavia, was flashbacks. And you said when you have a flashback, it could be in the day or night, and it always seems to be associated with some kind of anxiety or fear. Yes, there is a lot of anxiety. And wow. there is the idea that your body is out of control. But does your mind know it's not happening again? Well, for an instant, you don't know. There is part of your mind that can still be aware that why am I, why is my body reacting like that in such a panic if I am in this safe room? Why is that? So people can get confused and sometimes they think they're having heart attacks or other problems because they don't realize that they are traumatized and there was a trigger. They don't know that. So a lot of people have panic attacks. They just think that their body is shutting down or they are dying. And this is so traumatic that uh, maybe we need even to talk more about that because you can get traumatized by having a panic attack and then you're afraid to have another one. It's very unfortunate. But so the flashback can lead to more panic and lead to yes, more flashback. It's a, you, you really it's a get vicious stuck. circle. You really get stuck. And then wow. people are afraid to talk about it. They, they, they go sometimes to the emergency room and they say there's nothing wrong with you. So they think I'm going crazy. And so they don't ask for help because they get very... So that it's important that we talk about uh, panic attacks for people to understand that there is a reason for that and there are ways you can get better. So that's flashback. What's another symptom? Well, you're going to have uh, maybe nightmares. The other thing that happen is that because you don't really understand what are the triggers, what's going to happen is that you're going to withdraw or you're going to start avoiding. So you don't want to leave your house. You don't want to talk to people. You don't want to see what's happening. And social situations, or if there's too much noise or too much, or a lot of people, or whatever situations you think you're not in control, you don't want to go there. So you start really withdrawing and withdrawing. Wow. And you kind of, um, after being really, really afraid, what can happen is that you can feel numb. And Flavia, do people tell, uh, say the, these, tell you they have these things, or they keep it themselves? Well, people I see, they, they, they normally come for help, so they tell me what's going but on. Joe but Joe Blow, in person general, in, in, in society, they just go through this and, and just try to hold it to themselves? Yes, because there is a lot of fear I'm going crazy. Mm. There's a lot of fear I'm losing my mind. This is not normal. I don't know what's going on with me. It's That's better that I'll be quiet. Feeling, eh? huh? It's a terrifying it's feeling. And in, in where do I go for help? Who do I talk to? And am I going to be judged? Because sometimes people are not aware that there is a trigger that is related to a trauma. Sometimes, most of the times, I think, they just think it comes out of nowhere. They tell me, I don't know, I was at home, and then suddenly I had a panic attack. But if you go through them, through everything that happened, you will see there is a trigger. Something There's always happened. a trigger. There is mm -hmm. always a trigger, but sometimes it's unconscious. You're not aware of it, right? Mm -hmm. You're not aware of it. What about sleep? Does traumatization affect sleep? Yeah. So uh, the other thing is that all the physiological changes, what happens is that um, we as human beings, you know, like other animals, we're supposed to feel fear. But what happens, what's supposed to happen is like you feel fear, you do something about it and the fear is gone and then you go back to what I call like a baseline. A baseline where you're calm and alert. That's the way we should be. When you have a trauma, what happens, it gets completely deregulated. So what happens is you have a lot of fear and you just stay there for a long time. You are always and chronically afraid. And what happens is it starts becoming toxic to your body and mm -hmm. your body and your mind start suffering. Mm -hmm. So you start having uh, physical symptoms, pains that you can't explain. And is the person aware that this, this fear is always there? Sometimes, no, they just feel bad. I feel horrible. I don't feel like it. I'm not myself. I don't know what's going on with me. That's the sad thing. If you have the information, you're already a step ahead. If you know that you have, you've been traumatized, if you know you have PTSD, if you know you have triggers, that's, if you know that you are afraid, that's already really steps ahead. So what you're saying, just people listening tonight and getting information yes. from you is one way of helping yourself. Yes. Because if you don't know, you could really be in a traumatized situation. Because we are dealing with fear, and fear is the fuel for trauma, 
the more we get information, we more talk about it, the less you get afraid. So the symptoms already start coming down. People tell me, I came here to see you. My, my fear was in eight or nine, from zero to 10, eight or nine. And then after you, know, you talk and you explain and you know what's going on, oh, now I feel like it's a three or four. Nothing really happened. They're just less afraid because they get power over their situation. <laughs> they know what's going on. Flavia, you know, that's interesting because years ago, they did a number of studies that people who made appointments to see their therapist or psychiatrist, they got healed while they were on the waiting list. They got better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, just the fact that uh, saying... Especially when they're referred by their husband or their wife. <laughs> <laughs> just the feeling of powerlessness is very destructive. What's it like to see it? I know you've seen it many times in your practice. What's it like to see a real flashback, a real traumatized situation? What's it like? Being well, present? this is what made me really uh, uh, decide to study it more deeply because uh, there, if, if from one side it's very, uh, um, you know, you can even get traumatized just by hearing the stories of trauma. The second thing is that there is a lot that can be done. So I got uh, in the idea that we have to get people informed and get, uh, have to talk about this. So this got, got me interested in knowing more. But the third thing is that um, what we know about uh, trauma and PTSD, um, how to treat it, we have to get more information and be very creative about it because this is a social problem. It's all over us, more than we think. I think a lot of the initiatives and a lot of programs that we use to, to deal with uh, uh, health issues in the country are not taking into consideration what trauma is doing to people's health, mental and physical health. So this is why I think it's so important that we talk about it. Mm. If you don't address it, first you cannot prevent it, and first the way you treat it can be misleading. Mm. Actually giving a lot of medication for people with PTSD is not even proven as the best effects, right? right That's right. what happened in the States. They yeah. tried medication and then the studies are show that it helps, but it was not really enough. There must be other ways. Mm -hmm. And even psychotherapy, through talk therapy, there's also some, some, some PTSDs that doesn't show results that much. So people are getting creative and investigating and seeing how we can deal with that. Mm -hmm. This is almost like an epidemic talk. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. What are some of the tr things that traumatizes in everyday life? In everyday life? So we talked a little bit about natural disasters because this had happened uh, this week, but uh, you can have events, for example, as accidents, things that happen like sudden, sudden accidents, a car mm -hmm. accident or like terrible accidents. We heard about that. And then there is um, um, a lot of uh, abuse and violence inside the homes, inside the schools, inside places that you're supposed to feel safe. This is one of uh, the areas of trauma that um, needs really, really to be looked onto. Um, you know, in the, when you hear PTSD and trauma, people think a lot about the veterans that come back from war. And this is really, really very uh, serious, but I think people don't realize that there are the same symptoms that you can have because of uh, sexual abuse, childhood, or just sexual assault, um, intimate partner violence. You know, we hear cases of uh, terrible violence and even murder uh, in those situations. And you have to understand, it's not only the people that are the victim directly, or the, the ones that are around, the family and the friends are traumatized with those uh, situations, right? So the point you're making is that the victim is traumatized, but even the people around the victim, related to the victim, are also affected. Well, we, we, we see cases, you know, we see it very often also at, at the family, um, teenagers that saw their mothers uh, committing suicide or being killed, people very close to them. This is, uh, and they have PTSD symptoms, but we are not talking about it in, as the way we should be, to know mm. what to expect, right? Mm. Wow. <laughs> Does everybody get traumatized? Trauma is part of life. Trauma, so everybody gets traumatized? Yes, but some of us, depending on the trauma, we have more resources to make it um, resolved. Explain. Why does one person get traumatized by one event, another person has the same event and they don't get traumatized. Well, 
I believe they're like, uh, there are, we have to look at a person's constitution on what already happened to them, their level of resilience, what they already know, if there is community around them, <laughs> what happens before and after the trauma, how much they were, uh, how much they could act upon it, how much they were passive of how much they were active. And then it has to do with the trauma. How intense was the trauma? Was it a surprise? Were you kind of knowing it, it could happen? The other thing, if the trauma comes from someone that you trust and loved, this is one of the worst. Because you get the message that you cannot trust anyone, mm. and 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 this is very um, a big step for you to have a PTSD later because it has to do with you not feeling safe. So especially if it's in areas where uh, it should be intimate, it should be loving, it should be family. You're not if you're not safe at home, if you're not safe at school, if you're not safe in the environments you should be safe. Imagine going out. Is even worse, right? People that are traumatized outside, at least they can say, at least I can be home, right? But when the trauma is in the home or in the family setting, it's very difficult. Where can you go? That's why domestic violence is so terrible. It's terrible. And children um, being witness to, to domestic violence, victims are witness. What happens is that they get the message that the people I love, the authority figures that I should respect and trust, I cannot trust them. I don't know how they're going to act. They can change suddenly. They can't put my safety uh, into, uh, I can feel in, in danger. So it, it, it's very traumatizing because where can you go? Under your bed? I know a teenager that he could only sleep on his roof. He didn't feel safe in his bed. He told me, I found a way to be able to sleep again. I said, how? He said, I go up and I sleep on the roof. It's sad, right? That's amazing. They, he found a way to feel a little bit safe. I know, I know so a young person, she sleeps in her closet, inside her closet. Because she feels safe in the closet. That's the only place she feels a little bit safer. Because the home is not anymore a, a sign of safety. Right? So this traumatization is pretty widespread. It's widespread, <coughs> but not only we can prevent some of the trauma, it's part of life, as I said, but some traumas are preventable. But also if we get information and know how to treat it, uh, it's no longer traumatic anymore. It can be just a memory. Well, we're gonna take a break and be right back. <laughs> 